pornography. Some people believe it should be available and accessible without stigma. Others think, well, it's not for me, but it's fine for other people in certain situations. And a few people think it should be banned completely. Oh, uh, did I say pornography? Sorry, I meant abortion. Our main story tonight <laughs> is abortion. And yes, yes, we have talked about it before. Last time, we looked at the way abortion laws in America have, in many places, made access to abortion difficult, uh, as clinics all over the country have shut down. But tonight, we're going to focus on the exact opposite of an abortion clinic, something called a crisis pregnancy centre, facilities whose primary purpose is to talk women out of terminating a pregnancy, something they don't often make that clear, instead running friendly-looking ads like this. Before you make the decision about a pregnancy that comes at a less than perfect time, get jelly on the belly. Come to Sunrise Women's Clinic, a clinic where our nurses specialize in early pregnancy options. Okay. <laughs> jelly on the belly is a pretty childish way to describe an important medical procedure. I'm not sure that I would trust a doctor that referred to colonoscopies as looking for cooties in the booties. <laughs> but the second. One of the early pregnancy options that you won't get at Sunrise Women's Clinic is an abortion. But that can be hard to tell from their vague name and marketing. And that actually happens a lot with CPCs. Take the Center for Pregnancy Choices in Mississippi. It sounds like a welcoming place. The website even has links labeled Thinking Abortion and Thinking Parenting. And it was founded by a woman named Barbara Beavers, whose very name sounds like that of a sassy mother in a TV show about a family of beavers. It would be called Hot Damn, and it would be absolutely delightful. <laughs> but once you're inside her CPC, you will find that it is vehemently against any choice that is not carrying a pregnancy to term. In fact, just listen to Barbara explain where she stands on abortion. You're deceiving yourself if you say you can kill your baby and it'd be good for you. That's just deception. That's not true. It doesn't, it doesn't register with reality. Mamas, women are not made that way. Women are made to protect and to guard and to, to, to die for their babies, not their babies to die for them. Holy shit! Let me be perfectly clear here, Barbara. The only females made to die for their babies are Pacific salmon. They lay <laughs> thousands of eggs and then die after spawning. You're welcome. Tune in next week for more of Johnny O's fish facts, wildlife wonders, and abortion. <laughs> and centers like that one are proliferating. There are now 2,700 pregnancy centers in America compared to less than 1,700 abortion providers. And the discrepancy is even worse in certain states. Mississippi, for example, has one abortion clinic and 38 crisis pregnancy centers. So if they are that prevalent, people should absolutely know what they are. And look, if you believe abortion is immoral, you are, of course, allowed to set up a center dedicated to convincing women of that. But what is happening with CPCs is that way too often, women with unplanned pregnancies are being actively misled while trying to access health care. And CPCs seem happy to have women confuse them for abortion clinics. Just listen to Abby Johnson, an anti-abortion activist, addressing a conference for one of the largest CPC organizations. We want to appear neutral on the outside, the best call, the best client you ever get is one that thinks they're walking into an abortion clinic, okay? Those are the best clients that could ever walk in your door or call your center. The ones that think you provide abortions. Wow. Normally, the strategy, pretend you're an abortion clinic, is not actually a great marketing stunt. Although, I am pretty sure that Radio Shack would have tried that if they thought of it. <laughs> oh, so sorry. We don't actually perform abortions here, but while I've got you, can I interest you in a gently used USB cord or a Microsoft Zoom? <laughs> they come in brown. <laughs> and, and the effort to conceal their true intent takes many forms, starting with the name. Many CPCs have the word choice in their names, like Choices Women's Centre, Informed Choices Medical Clinic, and all these other CPCs, all of which feature the words choice in their name. And I know that almost every product does a bit of misleading advertising. No one would buy Pepsi if they were honest and called it Sad Coke. <laughs> or you, you wouldn't buy a Mini Cooper if they admitted they were just clown cars for regular people. <laughs> and while it should be easy to clarify any misconceptions with a simple phone call, that can be difficult. Just listen to what happened when one woman called a CPC for information, and keep in mind when you listen that the centre absolutely, under no circumstances, ever provides abortions. 
Good evening, White Rose. May I help you? Hi, I was wondering how much you charge for a first trimester abortion. Um, I really can't. I really can't. It's not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's the policy that we just like the people to come in and we can discuss then and, uh, and go forward. So CPCs can lure women to meet with them on false pretenses. Basically, they are catfishing them. A term that was coined because, of course, catfish are constantly trying to trick women who are out of their league into fucking them. That's right. That's right. You thought we were out of fish facts. You were wrong. We have millions. I could do this all day. But I'm not going to because we're talking about abortion. And CPCs can even intercept people's internet searches, and, and routinely by Google keyword ads for phrases like abortion and abortion clinic. And frequently, they'll go even further and try and physically intercept people, because they often locate themselves as close as possible to abortion clinics. For instance, one abortion provider in Hartford ran into some real problems with a similarly named CPC uh, when they deliberately located just 20 feet from them. This woman, who we aren't identifying, speaks candidly about the difficult decision she had to make after becoming pregnant after a rape. I didn't want the baby. It was a lot on my soul. Eventually, she decided to seek the services of the Hartford GYN. She initially went for counseling, and she can remember how the clinic's neighbor, Hartford Women's Health, tried to offer unsolicited counsel as well. They was trying to tug me over there, and I was like, you know, like, you're making me feel bad. Now, clearly, that's absolutely horrible. And incidents like that were so routine that the abortion clinic in question, in an attempt to keep its clients from going to the wrong place, painted the ramp outside their door bright yellow, like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Which is actually appropriate, because that movie, too, involves a young woman getting stopped several times by idiots bothering her with their own fucking issues <laughs> as she just tries to get where she needs to fucking go. <laughs> and... And if CPCs can't get a physical location right next to an abortion clinic, they have another trick up their sleeve, and that is buses that can literally park outside and try and tempt women in. Many CPCs operate mobile clinics with the help of organisations like Save the Storks, a name which really should immediately set off red flags. Oh, let me go into this van and talk to someone who thinks babies are brought by a deformed pigeon on stilts. <laughs> And to listen to them tell it, their vans are an absolute joy to be inside. These vehicles fit in one parking spot and will go right at the door of an abortion clinic. Every stork bus has a bathroom on it to be able to do a pregnancy test. Built-in refrigerator, the seats are all leather. This massage chair, this thing is really good for the back. We've had a lot of good reviews from the pregnant women uh, on the massage chair. Look. If someone wanted to spend their time in the back of a plush van and then be told not to have an abortion, they'd just fuck the lead singer of Creed. <laughs> and and once, once CPCs have women inside their building or van, they can employ every tactic in the book to try and get them to change their mind. Literally every tactic in the book, because Heartbeat International, which has 1,400 affiliates in the US, has this handbook with suggested scripts featuring some nonsense information. Uh, it suggests telling pregnant women that 35% of suicidal behaviours among women may be attributable to abortion, which is bullshit. <laughs> it also says that abortion almost doubles the risk of breast cancer, which is also bullshit. And while, in reality, abortion is far less medically dangerous than carrying a child to term, that hasn't stopped some CPC employees from saying things like this. If people die due to an abortion later on, a lot of times they're finding parts of the um, fetus in, like, the lungs or the heart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ab that, that happens a lot of times, doesn't it? <laughs> Which is why you're so often reading the obituaries and see Sarah Mitchell passed away last week at the age of 34 after she got baby dicks right in the heart. <laughs> it happens all the time. We're tired of reading it. <laughs> and, and the thing is, that medical advice can actually look pretty legitimate, because CPCs often have the trappings of a healthcare facility. Increasingly, they offer free ultrasounds, which can sound appealing. It's free. But often, they're not performing them so much for medical reasons as for emotional manipulation. Just watch this Christian Broadcasting Network profile of women who give free ultrasounds uh, in this bus that parks outside abortion clinics. Just watch as they describe their technique. They usually start crying as we begin and cover their eyes. And as we're continuing with the ultrasound, they start peeking out between their fingers and 
we call it a baby and we call them mom and look, your baby's sucking his thumb or he has the hiccups. She and all who operate the ultrasound machine will spend as much time as needed with the new moms. She stays on that table until we're, uh, until she, she decides she wants the baby. And if that isn't coercive enough, which it comfortably is, technicians at other clinics have written messages uninvited on the ultrasound like, hi, mommy and daddy. And if you're gonna write an unrequested ultrasound message, at least be creative about it. Write, I'm totally pooping in here. <laughs> or, I ate my twin. Or, please don't put this on Facebook, everyone hates that. <laughs> and, and finally, finally, CPCs can and have misled women about how pregnant they are or have delayed their decision to have an abortion past the point where it's possible. Watch as one doctor describes a case of a woman who came to her in her third trimester, having been under the care of a CPC that gave her terrible advice. They told her that she didn't have to worry, she didn't have to rush, there was no time issue because they do abortion in New York City up until term, which is patently ridiculous. So when she came to me, she was too pregnant. She had no, her partner had abandoned her. She had no money. She had three other children. She had no intention of being pregnant. And when she became pregnant during the time of her pregnancy, she'd been using drugs and alcohol. She very responsibly went to end the pregnancy. And now I had to tell her, you're going to have a baby. Look, that is obviously heartbreaking. And here's the thing. For all the lengths that CPCs will go to to prevent abortions, many of them don't do a key thing that would really help that, and that's give women access to birth control. In fact, that script from before instructs <laughs> CPCs, it instructs them to tell people condoms are ineffective in preventing pregnancy, and some operators like Barbara Beavers are hard skeptics. Condoms don't, they don't prevent, even used correctly. There's like a 20% failure rate. Even used correctly, there's a, a relatively high failure rate of condoms. I thought if a condom's used correctly, it's 98% effective. Oh, I don't believe that. I don't think that's I don't think that's correct. I would question that. So I'll find some of our data. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why are you laughing, Barbara? Is it because deep down, even you, Barbara Beavers, know that your data is complete horseshit? <laughs> because the fact is, if you want fewer abortions, you should love birth control. You should be filling Pez dispensers with birth control pills. You should be giving condoms out to trick-or-treaters and IUD earrings out as hostess gifts. Birth control should be your favorite thing in the whole world. But of course, Many of these CPCs are about much more than just abortion. They're about controlling women's sexual behavior. Many are church-affiliated, like the Pregnancy Care Center in Fort Pierce, Florida, which was started by a Catholic priest. Uh, he's called Father Thomas Eitenauer. Now, I, I don't want to say that he had a condescending view of women, but watch him describe the lengths that he would go to to lure them away from entering an abortion clinic. I remember the time when... Uh... They had the fence up in front of the place. They put the fence up. I decided that I would talk to women over the fence by bringing a ladder and getting on top of the ladder mm -hmm. and talking to them over the fence. And so, of course, that generated a, a 911 call because I was uh, now uh, talking down to women. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? I was both literally and figuratively talking down to them. I, I made it clear to them that, that they're merely vessels for the purpose of giving birth and nothing else. I don't actually even see them as full humans. That's, that's why what I do is funny. I, I break myself up. I'm a, I'm a chuckle monster. <laughs> Woo! That's priceless. Now, quick side note about that particular priest. Not long after that was filmed, he admitted to violating the boundaries of chastity with a woman who accused him of molesting her for two years during what was supposed to be an exorcism. And some of the details in her allegations are insane. He kissed the corners of her mouth, stroked her legs, breasts and thighs, caressed her face, laid his body on top of hers, and frequently explained full passionate kisses as blowing the Holy Spirit into her. Let us be clear. If you are doing anything that can be described as blowing the Holy Spirit into someone, you are very much doing kissing wrong. And, and, unless your idea of an exorcism is making the woman burp a lot, you're also doing exorcisms wrong as well. 
Which could be why it took you two years. <laughs> uh, at this point, at this point, you might be wondering how you can give women ultrasounds and inaccurate medical information and not break the law. Well, CPCs are very careful to stop just short of the line where they will be regulated as healthcare providers. And this offers them numerous advantages. For example, uh, they're generally not subject to HIPAA, a federal law requiring that patients' information be kept private, which is, frankly, not ideal in a setting where such sensitive information is being shared. And if you are not already angry enough at this point, the government actually funds CPCs. You are paying for them. They, they can get federal funding, and 16 states use taxpayer money to fund them directly. And they will say, they will say that their fervently held beliefs can justify some of the methods that you've seen tonight. And they might point to the assistance that some centres provide to young mothers, like parenting classes and free diapers, which, which is great if those women want to be mothers. Although, as Abby Johnson advised CPC operators in that conference you saw earlier, that, that help can be surprisingly limited. If I were to open a pregnancy centre, I would not have pregnancy items past six months. Are we running a charity? Are we running a place where we want women to become self-sufficient? Self-sufficient, right? Have maternity clothes, have those things available for the women while they're pregnant, but cut them off. Wow. So the basic argument there is, we're just not in a position where we can take care of a baby forever. We don't have the time or the resources, so we're choosing not to make that commitment right now. To which I would say, yeah, exactly. Look, look, the, the, point, the point here is, the real point here is, the tactics that CPCs often use are disingenuous and predatory, and it's absolutely critical that people understand that. But they really don't. W watch how one local news outlet covered the opening of a CPC in the gigantic CareNet network. Schuylkill County is one of the only counties in our area that does not have a planned parenthood. But that doesn't mean teens don't have a place to go for help. CareNet of Schuylkill County recently expanded to two facilities, one for parents and one for expecting mothers under the age of 21. No, don't say that! Because if you want all the options available to you, those two are not remotely the same. That's like saying, hey, our town doesn't have a youth sports league, but we do have a large scary man in sweatpants who will chase your kids around. <laughs> he too operates out of a van. And, <laughs> and people need to understand this, because right now it is way too easy for a religious organisation to disguise its true nature, establish a CPC, and provide women with dangerously poor information about one of their most important health choices. And I can prove to you how easy it is. You may remember, back in season two, I established the Church of Our Lady of Perpetual Exemption <laughs> with my lovely wife, Wanda Jo Oliver. Well, l last week, we filed paperwork in New York to create a new nonprofit, Our Lady of Choosing Choice, to set up our own crisis pregnancy centre. So, where will our clinic be? That depends. Where are you right now? Because our clinic has wheels and we will travel. Behold! Behold our new mobile crisis pregnancy centre. Look at it. Behold the rolling thunder. And look, you know, you know that there is absolutely no way that I would open this alone, right? Well, howdy there! Howdy there, Pastor Joe! Howdy there. Howdy there, my wonder Joe. Howdy there to you. Praise be, praise be, and welcome to Vanned Parenthood. Oh, thank you so much. Now, now in this van, we are allowed to tell women whatever dubious information comes into our heads. Isn't that right, my wonder? That's right, my John. Mm. I tell women if they get an abortion, it'll make a ghost baby that'll haunt her hoo ha forever. Ooh. Ooh, that, that is spookier. Uh, what, what else do you say, wonder? Getting an abortion turns your breast milk into kombucha. <laughs> Ew, that's weird. It is weird. One more fact for the people at home, one. After an abortion, your vagina seals shut like an Egyptian tomb. Wow, that's a striking image. These are all things that we can say. And did you know that I'm not legally required in New York to have any training at all to use this ultrasound machine? Wow, that's absolutely terrifying. Well, in that case, let's get some jelly on some bellies. Let's do it. I got raspberry. I got prenatal items that are really just gummy bears. Praise <laughs> be.
me. Yeah, praise, yeah, praise, see. praise. What's praise. going on over here? Oh. Oh, oh, yeah, there's the baby right there. Yes. You're pregnant. Yes. It's a miracle. I'm with Joe. I'm with Joe. Now, now, what did Joe? I've got to ask you something. It's a tricky question. How do you feel about birth control? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. Mm. You know, I do give out condoms, but I tell people they're 0% effective. You do? Yes. How's that possibly... How's that because po I cut the tips off these suckers. Wow. Let you blow the Holy Spirit right on through. Wow. Wow. And look, the best part is, just like our church, we are tax-exempt and we could be eligible for government funding. Praise discretionary budgets. Praise drugstore pregnancy tests. Praise privacy law loopholes. Praise women being too darn emotional to make decisions about their own bodies. Oh, Wanda Joe. Oh, Wanda Joe, don't, don't cry, don't cry. The point is, this is all perfectly legal and there is absolutely nothing stopping us from parking outside an abortion clinic tonight and haranguing people first thing in the morning. And frankly, there really fucking should be. <laughs>